Marco here with another episode of Beers and Bells. Got my co-host here, Nano, aka Honey Bear, and we're here for a special episode. So before we go any further, want to remind you guys of the 1,000 subscriber challenge. So once our cha um, channel reaches 1,000 subs, we're going to select five winners, and each of those winners is going to receive five free personal training sessions. They're going to be an hour long each, in person or virtual, depending on where you are in the country or the world. Um, I think we do actually have some international viewers, Nano, so we are definitely um, becoming global. So she's obviously very excited about that. <laughs> in addition to those five sessions, it's going to be a three-month customized workout program, and that's going to be accessible via free smartphone app. So it's going to be three months of programming, customized, completely tailored to your goals. And the very last thing is going to be the Strength With Purpose shirt, which I'm actually not wearing today. I'm actually repping the Bear Moose Brewing shirt today. Um, but it's the cool kind of Thor-inspired kettlebell logo that we put together earlier last year. So, oh, and Happy New Year, by the way. Um, as of this uh, filming, it is January 1st, so 2021. We officially survived 2020, Nano. So we are not doing too bad. So please, if you like this content, if you want to become a part of the Strong Squad and get more content like this, please like and hit that sub button and join the Strong Squad. So I want to thank you all so much. So now, now, what are we drinking today? Oh, Nano's got something today. Yeah. All right. So we each have a beer today. So Nano's going to be drinking Bowser Beer Cockadoodle Brew. So Bowser Beer is a company that we found online. And we got Nano a couple free pats for Christmas. So we're going to be enjoying her. So this is a really cool company. So it's non-alcoholic uh, beer for dogs. And it actually has glucosamine in it, which is really cool. I believe it's actually good for joint health, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Nano actually loves this stuff. So really excited to have this. So let's crack Nano's open first. Let's hook her up. What do you think about that, huh? Yeah. Got this nice beer glass from... Your Mimi. This is the chicken flavored one. So what do you think? A little bit of that? Yeah. Yeah, she likes the chicken one, so it's really good. There you go. Let her have a couple sips. You have no idea how excited I was to uh, to get this for her. So although those of you that know me and know how much I love dogs, you know how, uh, how pumped I was. So yeah, there's the Bowser beer. I'm... Uh, Checking out, this is the Diamond Lake. This is a double IPA uh, with Mosaic. This is actually from Remnant Brewery in Somerville. It's one of my favorite breweries in Massachusetts. It's uh, They're based out of Somerville, Massachusetts in the heart of Union Square. And um, really good beer, really awesome people. So I'm super excited to be cracking this open with you guys today. So let's go ahead and get this set up. You think Nano, not too bad? You like yours more, don't you? All right, let's see my skills. And boom, not too bad. All right, so shout out to Remnant Brewery and Bowser Beer Company. So a couple awesome companies. We love your products and definitely appreciate what you guys are doing. So today's episode, um, I'm going to talk to you guys about mental health. So this is pretty much a follow-up to the really... Um, really honest uh, talk that Sean had with you guys, with us, when he talked about um, anxiety. He was talking about his struggles that he had with mental health and anxiety and, um, and a little bit of depression. So I was honestly very inspired by what he said and the message that he had. And honestly, the very encouraging, Nano, get over here. Get over here. Come here. Get over here. Come. Kids these days, I don't want to work a day. And they're like, come here. Get in the bed. Come here. Get in there. She's definitely fired after this. No, I'm kidding. Come here. Lay down. Lay down. Come on. Okay. Come here. Good girl. Awesome. All right. So she just did not feel like working today for uh, for some reason. So, no, I'm just kidding. So, um, anyways. So I was really inspired by um, Sean's episode when he did his piece on mental health. He talked about anxiety, talked about depression, talked about the experiences that he had with those, kind of struggling with those and what he did to cope with those. So um, they really inspired me to give you my story on that as well. Um, I have some very similar experiences as Sean and um, definitely some 
you know, positive um, kind of spins on those as well. So definitely going to be kind of sound a little negative initially, but I promise you there's going to be um, some kind of happy endings coming in um, from that as well. So um, just want to kind of let you guys know, this is just me opening up. I want to share the experience with you. I want to preface uh, what the rest of the message with, if you are in trouble, if you are experiencing an issue with like mental health, if you are anywhere near thinking about hurting yourself or anything like that, please seek help immediately. Get help, find a professional, and uh, please do that because we, you know, we love you. We want to have you here. And if you're at that point in life, please find a professional. My wife is a psychiatrist. That's something that uh, medical and psychiatric professionals really want to push is get that help, especially for men. There's such a there's such a stigma with mental health problems in, in the country, not just America, but in the world. It's like, you know, you have to be a man, you have to be strong. And if you seek any help from a mental health professional, you're seen as weak and there's a stigma behind that. Um, so that's something that uh, is definitely slowly changing um, as we, you know, as we go from year to year. And it's something that I want to see change, especially I want to really normalize men talking about their feelings. <laughs> Funny enough, you know, um, but in all seriousness, that's something that is still heavily stigmatized in, um, in culture, particularly in Western culture. So um, that's the reason I want to share my story with you and to kind of help that process of normalizing that, um, that story. So just to give you guys some background, um, when I was three years old, my mother passed away. Um, it was very sudden, it was an automobile accident, and the details are actually a little bit um, unknown. We don't actually know the full um, details of, of exactly what happened. So um, obviously a, a pretty pretty sudden life change, you know, life-changing event that happened and definitely completely changed the trajectory of my life, you know, from that point on, of course. You could say that of any life experience, I'm sure. So definitely, you know, experienced that. That was a that was probably a big trigger. Of course, a big, a big life experience that caused that. And kind of coupled with that, all through elementary school, middle school, and even a little bit through high school, um, I was bullied incessantly. I got my ass kicked. I got pushed down by a bunch of kids in the playground. I remember getting actually choked out <laughs> during, uh, during science class in second grade when one of the classmates, or one of, excuse me, when the teacher left and uh, actually he got me in a chokehold and God was twice my size, so it wasn't really anything I could do about it, uh, and definitely kind of um, got me in a compromised position. So I remember being very embarrassed, very angry about that, and um, a lot of resentment had built up, you know, from from that happening, and many other instances where I was bullied and um, kind of taken advantage of. So uh, for those of you that have ever experienced that, my heart goes out to you. I totally understand, and um, those experiences definitely stick with you. Uh, for life. You definitely, you don't stop thinking about that kind of stuff even as you're older. So, um, but that being said, it, it is important to kind of process these issues and, and definitely move forward. So those were kind of the two main things that, uh, that I can kind of look back at on my life, look back on in my life that um, definitely kind of caused, I guess you could say, some of these, these issues that I've experienced. But I um, got to the point where I was actually diagnosed by a psychiatrist with anxiety and depression and actually was on medication for both of those. So um, they were very helpful and I'm very glad that I sought help. I definitely needed it at the time. I was in a very terrible place. Um, I wasn't doing very well um, academically, financially, really anything. <laughs> Quite honestly, uh, just about every, every facet of my life wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly uh, strong, uh, wasn't doing really well. My lifestyle was terrible. I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. I was consuming way more alcohol than anybody should have, um, you know, at the time. Just definitely unhealthy levels, and just eating terribly. wasn't active, and uh, just overall, my lifestyle was was horrible. To be honest with you, it, it was really really bad. Um, honestly, shout out to my wife Lauren. Uh, meeting her was really one of the things that really started to kind of turn things around and change things. You know, I don't know. Um, sometimes I wonder why she stuck with me. <laughs> Because uh, there were definitely times when things were not looking very good for me, but um, she obviously saw things that I didn't, and she definitely stuck with me, and uh, and definitely you know continues to support me to this day. So um, I love you, hon. I really appreciate everything that you've done for me. Um, I like to make the joke that you've um, doubled my life expectancy. Uh, it's probably tripled, if not potentially quadrupled. So <laughs> in all seriousness, so um, so I love you, hon. I really appreciate everything. So. Um, but anyway, so, you know, I was on medication. It definitely really helped. 
and um, you know, it, it definitely helped me kind of level out and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I definitely got into a situation where there were just things I was I was experiencing. There was you know, there was family stress, you know, f some financial troubles I had gotten myself into. Uh, was very very unhappy with my career trajectory and that was exactly nothing. I wasn't really going anywhere. Um, so I just didn't have that sense of purpose in my life. So that was another um, one of many things that kind of triggered the anxiety and had me feeling the way I was feeling. And um, you know, it's, it's, so those of you that are maybe going through this or maybe just coming out of this, hopefully, um, I'm sure this is gonna resonate with a lot of you. Number one, I'm just going to kind of reiterate, you know, don't be afraid to seek help if you need it. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, I think there's this crazy stigma with if, if you're on medication, there's something wrong with you. Like, don't think of it that way. The, these, you know, these medical professionals and pharmaceutical companies, they're not they're not evil corporations out to get you. I think that's a lot of that, that uh, um, you know, conspiracy stuff gets thrown out there about about these companies and about these professionals. Like they enter the industry to help you. Um, they're here to help you, especially the doctors and psychiatrists. So, you know, go find a professional and get the help. It, it certainly helped me. I can definitely, um, definitely tell you that right now. So, um, but the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is actually what I did to help increase and improve my mental health. Um, there's actually a bunch of things that I did. So again, number one, if you're in a really bad place, find a professional. That was the very first step that I took. I knew that I, I needed somebody to help me through um, the issues, particularly when everything was like at its worst, kind of at that, that tipping, that melting point, if you will. So that was the number one thing that I did. And then from there, I really just started slowly trying to make better decisions. And it all came down to really just my lifestyle. There were a lot of things that I was doing that was really not good for my mental health. That was really um, counting against me. You know, I was staying up really late, watching TV shows, binge watching series on Netflix. Um, again, I told you I was a, I'm, I'm a, you know, proud to say now I'm a former smoker. Um, you know, that was another thing that I did. You know, quit smoking, and that obviously <laughs> increased my physical health, but then also definitely helped with my mental health. It really, really helped decrease my anxiety symptoms. So. Um, it's actually funny when you're a smoker and you, you know, you're at work or something stressful happens and you just, you crave that cigarette and you think that, you think that cigarette is going to make you feel better. Um, but it's so funny how like in the moment you feel quote unquote better, but it just, that, that addiction kicks in and then you're just, you're just craving more and more and more and more and more. And then you, just, you find yourself getting wound up even, even tighter, um, than you were before. So it's, uh, you know, it's like the dog chasing its tail. It's a, it's a vicious cycle to get into. So. Um, I will say this, I'm not going to lecture you, but I will say quitting smoking was one of the best decisions I ever made for my physical and my mental health. So um, if you're, if you are a current smoker and you're thinking about quitting, you know, when you're ready to make that decision, I 100% support you. I think it'll be a really good thing for your health and for your life. So um, that's one thing that I'll say. Another thing, ironically, as I sit here and drink this delicious craft beer, is I heavily cut down on my alcohol intake. I found that it was really the, the drinking, the junk food eating, and the lack of sleep and everything was just really, it was wearing my body down and it was really just wreaking havoc on my mental health. It was just putting me in a bad state. I was waking up the next day feeling terrible and it just, everything was just counting against me. All, all, you know, all the variables, the chips were stacked against me, if you will. So that was another thing I did. I really... Um, cut back on that, started drinking a lot more water, cut back as well on the soft drinks. You know, now my rule is I don't drink a soft drink unless I'm out somewhere. I don't buy soda and put it in the fridge. So that's uh, kind of one of my little things that I did. And, uh, and just really, really cutting back on the alcohol really helped. So that was another, another one of many things that I did. So obviously there, there's the obvious one. You guys know I'm a personal trainer. I love to work out and train. That was another really big thing that I did as well. Just, just training my body, working out, um, lifting weights, you know, walking my dog, Nano, just being, being active um, at some capacity every single day has really helped. You know, doing mobility, doing stretches and all that kind of stuff. So that was another thing that I did that really helped me again. It, it of course improved my physical health, but it really improved my mental health and it's really helped with my confidence, really helped decrease my you know anxiety and depression symptoms um, to the point where I actually feel really, really good. And um, they've really just helped um, just naturally um, level me out and have me feeling better. So uh, that was another step that I took. Working out, 
has been my saving grace, especially during this pandemic. You know, we're, you know, I'm in Massachusetts and we're going through our second shutdown right now. You know, gyms are closed and, you know, unemployed <laughs> at home. So uh, working out has been a good outlet for me to burn off that extra energy and to, to stay sane. So, which obviously you guys know that my, um, my big, uh, our big slogan that we use is train your body, feed your mind. The very next thing I would say is just reading, reading and learning and improving, even if it's, you know, um, just a few minutes out of the day. You know, I love listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, reading books, and I like to learn something. And typically I'll learn something about fitness or about business or sales or entrepreneurship or uh, productivity or self-improvement, kind of that, that kind of realm, if you will. So um, I find that if I, if I train my body and if I feed my mind and learn something that day, I feel very content with the day. I feel like the day was well used and that the time wasn't wasted. So it's definitely something that, that I also did and continue to do in order to help enhance my mental health. So the other thing I'll be honest with you, uh, one of the biggest steps I, I took, and this was just a selfish one, was um, getting a dog. Uh, <laughs> having a dog, um, dogs are just obviously a great companion. They're super fun. They're always happy to see you. <laughs> And uh, for the, I would say 99% of, of my interactions with Nano are very positive. So um, she doesn't like to take a bath. So she gets, she kind of gives me the side eye uh, whenever it's bath time, which is why her mother usually is the one that bathes her because um, I'm the weak one and she's definitely the, the bad cop. I'm the good cop. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, having a dog is great. It, it's the, the chance to show unconditional love for another creature um, you take care of her. I have to take her outside. I, I have to be active because if I'm not, she's going to get anxious and she's going to start chewing and, and become destructive in the home. So it's, um, it's very important to make sure that Nano gets her activity. So uh, by default, she actually forces me to be more active, which is really, really good. And um, obviously everyone loves, you know, most people love dogs. So it, it's also a really good social buffer, um, a really good way to kind of meet people and, um, and just kind of you know, just have positive interactions with people. So that's another positive one there. So she's obviously tired of this conversation already. So you get bored with me? So just kidding. Love you, honey. So those are the really, the main things that I did that really helped me um, enhance my mental health and just feel better. And I'm happy to tell you right now that um, I'm, I've been a non-smoker for the last, I believe, I think I just hit seven years recently. So very proud to be able to admit that to you guys. I, um, like I said, I'm much more, much more physically active than I was before working out consistently. I'm currently training for a very intense kettlebell challenge, uh, that has required a lot of effort from me. So it's, it's great to be able to do that and kind of have something to focus on. And, um, you know, I feel great, you know, life's, life's, life's good. I'm not on the medications anymore. I haven't been on them for, um, a couple of years now. And I, I feel, I feel awesome. You know, I, so that, that was really kind of the main message I wanted to tell you guys is that no matter where you are, things, things can and will get better. You know, I think this year especially was stressful with the pandemic, the shutdowns, the economic downturn, um, you know, deaths, people getting sick, a lot of fear and a lot of uncertainty in the world. But there, there is still a lot that you can do in order to make yourself feel physically and mentally better. So I just want you to, you know, be hopefully a little bit inspired by the story to know that there are steps that you can take to actually improve your situation, particularly, like I said, with your mental health. So, you know, you, you know, no matter what's going on in the world, you can still, you know, do a couple push-ups, do some jumping jacks, some, you know, sit-ups, some, um, you know, if you have a jump rope, whatever, go walking, take the stairs and, um, and little things like that to increase your activity. You know, obviously if you're watching this video, you have access to the internet, you can go online, um, you can, of course, if you want to have, I'm an old school guy, I love physical books. So you can, you can get books on from the library or from Amazon or whatever. Or if you just want to read articles online, you can do that as well. So you, there's a lot of things you can do. There are a lot of things you can do in order to, you know, train your body. And like I said, feed your mind and, um, and definitely help enhance your mental health. So, uh, but I still want to reiterate that if you, if you are in a, in a dark place and I've been there. So I can definitely relate to you there. You know, I, I have been in that dark place before. And I know when you're in, in there, when you're, when you're feeling it, um, it feels like it's never going to end. You feel like that life's going to be terrible. And you find sometimes find yourself wondering, you know, what's the freaking point? And um, I just have to tell you, if you get there, please find a professional and go seek help. 
Um, it's, you know, it's, it's worth it. It's no one's gonna, you know, the people that matter at least aren't, they're not gonna call you weak. There's nothing wrong with you. As men, it's more important for us to battle our demons and find that balance so that we can be good fathers, husbands, spouses, you know, members of the community, business owners, employees, um, dog owners, <laughs> whatever roles that we decide to take in life. Um, we all, as humans, we all experience some form of trauma, right? I th no one in life um, gets through unscathed. We all have scars. So I think the most important thing that I've learned, particularly over the last five years, is that we all have our own baggage. We all have our, our issues and our problems. Like no one's, no one's perfect and no one's exempt from that, right? No one lives in that, um, that um, bubble, if you will, and, and, and is, uh, is protected from everything. Life's gonna, life's gonna come at you. Life's gonna hit you pretty hard. Um, but it's up to us as to how we're gonna react to the situations that occur to us. So, um, you know, I told you about my mother passing away and my mental health issues and uh, my ac academic issues I had at school. You know, I actually left college without a degree. I actually don't have a college degree right now. Um, you know, I don't broadcast that to everybody normally, but you know, again, just to give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of background on me. That being said, I have a beautiful wife. I have an amazing daughter on the way. I have a kick-ass team of coaches that I that I, we have put together that we're putting together an awesome fitness business and a brand. Um, that we're really excited to be launching very soon. I have this amazing dog who is an excellent companion um, to me and is very loving to me all the time and just brings me a tremendous amount of joy. You know, I, I'm in a position to where I'm able to actually give back to the community and I'm able to do some things to actually help some others that are in an even worse position than I am in some respects. And that brings me a great amount of joy and a great amount of fulfillment. So I'm I'm to the point in my life now where I'm grateful for the bad things that happen in my life in a, in a strange way because they brought me to this very present moment. You know, I, I, I've talked to my wife about this, um, I have talked to her about this many, many times about how um, obviously I'm not, I'm not saying you should, you should hope that, you know, you should be happy that someone died. Um, that's obviously a bit morbid. However, that moment, had that not happened, I very well could not be here. You know, I could not have Lauren in my life. I couldn't have a daughter on the way. I couldn't have, you know, this beautiful dog and this amazing home and living in an awesome city and having all of these amazing opportunities in front of me. So a big thing for me was just processing everything that happened. And, you know, you can't explain everything. Sometimes, you know, as the expression goes, shit happens. It's true. Sometimes things just happen at random and you can't, you can't just... You can't explain what happened. And, and as humans, we're very obsessed with rationalizing and, and finding reasoning for everything. Sometimes things just happen, okay? And that being said, it's up to us to pick up the pieces and figure out what the heck we're gonna do with the next steps. So, you know, life isn't perfect. I'm not gonna BS you. We all have our struggles. I have my issues. I have my, my, my tough days like everyone else. Um, but overall, I'm very, very grateful for the challenges that I've faced in life because they have prepared me for the next step. You know, this last year, my, you know, my previous challenges I had faced prepared me for this year that we just went through with obviously the pandemic, the shutdowns and everything that happened. So, um, and I, I have a feeling that the challenges I experienced this year are probably preparing me for what I'm gonna face in 2021 and 2022 and beyond. You know, so I have great people around me. I'm very fortunate. I have an awesome circle of folks around me that um, support me, guide me, and push me. And um, that's one thing that obviously, if, if you do have, lean on those people in your in your darkest times, uh, because that's going to um, that's going to help you get through those tough times. So definitely, definitely do that. And um, you know, I hope I hope you have the people in, in your circle that I do, um, because I, I have some really amazing people. And I'm very lucky. And um, they have probably helped me a lot more than they realize, um, probably much more than they realize. So, um, you know, I could name a bunch of people, but then it would take another 30 minutes to get through all this. So <laughs> it wouldn't take up too much of your guys' time. So, um, but just to let you guys know, again, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm quote unquote cured and perfect and all that kind of stuff. I, I still have my, my low points and I still experience my, my obstacles in life, but um, there is another side to the tunnel. You, there, there, are, there are better days ahead. And again, it's up to us to decide how we're going to deal with the obstacles that have been placed before us 
and what we're going to do in the next steps. Okay, so I kind of want to, like I said, want to leave it on a positive note. Um, if you're going through, you know, a tough time right now, um, one of my favorite expressions is from a, a movie. You know I me; mean? I love my movie quotes. Uh, the movie The Crow. Um, it can't rain all the time. It's not going to be tough all the time. Like that, you're. We're, it's peaks and valleys, right? We're going to have our our booms and our busts, our high points and our low points, and it's a very it's a very rhythmic, cyclical nature. And I've really observed this the last few years, especially how you're going to see, you know, companies do really, really well and then they lose it all. And, you know, you have you have industries that were booming pre pandemic. Now they're down in the toilet. You know, you talk about uh, airline companies, you talk about the hospitality industry, the food industry, beverage industry. Um, you know, you talk about those industries, they were they were killing it, obviously, beforehand. Now they're at a very low point, the pandemic, social distancing and everything going on. Um, now, when the vaccine fully rolls out, everybody's vaccinated, we're at herd immunity and all that great stuff. Uh, guess what? Those industries are going to go back up. They're going to boom again. Everyone's going to be out eating and drinking again. Everyone's going to be, you know, getting on airplanes and traveling. Um, so there's there's a cyclical nature to um, a lot of things in life. And I've definitely kind of noticed that. So one thing, again, I know I'm kind of rambling now, but basically, if you're going through a tough time right now, it's not going to last forever. If it's a really dark time and you are experiencing thoughts, like I said, of hurting yourself or you're in a really, really dark place, seek help immediately. Find a professional and go get the help that you need. I did it. I'm very glad that I did. And I can tell you that it very well could have saved my life. So there's there's definitely a high likelihood that that's the case. So, um, so definitely know that. But um, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you listening to me kind of share my story. I really hope that this resonated with you. I really hope that this, hopefully for any of you that this applies to, hopefully it inspires you maybe even just a little bit to take some steps to enhance your mental health and feel better. And, um, and just know that, um, you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So the time that we have, let's try to make the most of it. Let's try to do the best we can. And, you know, we all have our, our issues. We all have our scars. But again, it's up to us as to what we're going to do with the time that we have. So thank you all so much for watching. And I'm going to leave you again with this very empowering mission going into 2021 and beyond. Train your body, feed your mind.